Hey, I'm Luke with Auto Darts. Today we are checking out the Rush 40. This is a brand new blaster in the Nerf Hyper series, which is a completely new lineup, and I couldn't be more excited to finally get my hands on these blasters. Let's get going. Before we get started on this review, I do want to mention that Hasbro's PR team did send me this blaster along with the rest of the lineup. So keep that in mind. My opinions are my own. However, I wanted to be upfront and make sure everybody knows that I did get the blasters for free. I would have bought them no matter what because this is my business, this is my life. <laughs> for those of you new to the channel, my name is Luke. I run a Nerf Mod hobby shop. I sell all the parts, tools, supplies, and accessories to modify blasters. So when new blasters come out and a new lineup like the Hyperline, it usually gets us pretty excited. This is the Rush 40. This is the entry level option in the brand new Hyper lineup. Now I've talked about Hyper in another video, the ammo video, and I'll link that in the description once that's up as well, because the ammo is really, really interesting in itself. It is smaller than Rival, and it is much, much squishier, and it is denser, so it's a little bit heavier. It's also, in my testing, much more durable. It's no surprise that I am a fan of Rival. I've loved the round ammunition the entire time I've been playing Nerf games as an adult, and it's been a really fun lineup to uh, mod, to play with, and to innovate on. Two of my largest designs in the Rival world are the Hurricane Blaster and the Proton Pack, which is a backpack-fed Rival Blaster. So, of course, when a new ammo type comes out, I'm really interested to see what it has to offer. And so far, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen. The Rush 40 is a 40-round capacity. I say capacity because it only comes with 30 rounds. I can only assume this was a cost-cutting measure to reduce the price of the blaster which makes me think that these rounds are going to be expensive, and lo and behold, yes, they are. In addition to the blaster, they do offer a number of accessories, including a paintball-style mask and upgrade canisters, which can be mounted in multiple orientations on the blaster. I don't know that I would run around with this as a normal setup, but I guess I could see some people enjoying that. The system of locking in is pretty simple. It would work just fine. This is very similar to a paintball pod, so that's certainly where the inspiration came from. And I do think it's a good idea overall because you will go through a lot of ammo. This allows you to just flip the top and load them up. Um, that said, these balls tend to go everywhere and they are extremely bouncy, <laughs> especially compared to Rival. This blaster is a top slide prime. The entire hopper assembly moves back and it's just single, single fire. Now you'll notice there that one did not feed. You do have to give this a little bit of an agitation in between shots, or it needs to be pointed slightly down so that the ball can roll into the little ramp and get out of the barrel. You can see, I'm not trying to exaggerate here, but with about only a half hopper, I've got about 12 rounds in there, it's pretty easy to, to to misfire, but that sequence was fine. There we go again. So you do need to kind of keep in mind that in order to prime it, you're gonna to have to be pointing down a little bit for that first ball to load in. If you're at all pulling back and aiming up, you, the second round, well, there we did pretty well. So <laughs> basically there's a little ramp and the ball kind of goes in and down. And if there's not one in there, which can happen if you go, if you point too far back priming, but uh, in, in actuality, I think it'll work just fine in gameplay. Running around my garage and playing with my daughter, it worked just fine. Ergonomically, the blaster is very comfortable. We've got Picatinny style rails up top. They're actually more like the rival rail, of course, for sizing. And we've got a nice, decent size grip that fits even my large hands. The handle itself is just large enough for my large hands. If you had extra large hands, you might find your three fingers down here a little bit cramped. I like the shape of the grip. The texturing is also very nice. They've gone with some nice uh, carbon fiber-like texturing on the actual mold. Uh, this is considerably more expensive, so it does feel a little bit premium. When you're doing finishes on an actual mold, this texture actually has to be milled into the mold to get that texture. And uh, it's a very nice touch and it looks very cool. I love the aesthetic, both in design and in the color scheme. For one of the first times ever, we get beautiful paint on both sides, which means someone at Hasbro has been listening to Drac, I think. <laughs> uh, 
but I overall am initially very impressed. I really wanna see where this goes once we get into modding it. Now, do subscribe because I will be modding all of these new blasters as soon as possible and offering parts for them as soon as we can. The performance out of the box is nothing short of stellar when it comes to FPS, but FPS is only one part of the equation. Uh, shooting this over the, over the chronograph, we got an average FPS of about 117 feet per second. That's considerably higher than Rival. Most of the Rival blasters will claim 100 FPS, but will actually be slightly lower than that. The most interesting part to me is going to be how far these balls travel in comparison to the Rival balls. Because they are smaller and denser, they should in theory fly farther. So I cannot wait to get testing further and really see how far we can push these. The consistency from shot to shot on my unit is also spectacular. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, it is a very solid blaster. Coming in at $30, it's a little bit more pricey than, say, a Kronos. Kronos, I believe, when they started were $20. They could have been $15. I know they've been as low as $15. So you are paying a considerable amount more for a very similar size and profile blaster. They um, are very much brothers when it comes to the, the feel, the look, the ergonomics, and it's definitely a replacement. That said, this is a five-shot blaster. This holds 40. I think the fact that it comes with 30 rounds versus five rounds, I'll let you be the judge of whether that's worth the difference in $10, but it's not totally outside the realm of being reasonably priced. Another nice inclusion is all three of the initial blasters do come with eye protection. It is a little bit larger than the ones we sell at the shop, but it is actually quite comfortable. Um, I do believe these are not actually shop glasses, so I would not recommend using these as safety glasses in the shop because they are probably not rated for that, but they will certainly protect you from the rounds. And I do think it's appropriate when using this blaster to be using this, uh, these, these glasses, because they do hit with a fair amount of force compared to a lot of other dart blasters. A couple more technical notes that I have seen. The accuracy on the Springer blasters, including the Mach 40, has been quite good. However, this one lacks a hop-up, and it's very noticeable in that the balls seem to go down and drop range fairly quickly. I've actually been playing around, if you shoot it upside down, it almost seems like it flies farther, which to me seems like there's some interference happening in the barrel that might be giving some oddball spins. Um, it's definitely most accurate in the vertical position, but it seems like the ranges could be increased with the hop up. I expect it could be due to wanting to hit an FPS target at a certain amount of force required for the prime. So one of the things I'll be looking at is designing a new muzzle that has a hop up, potentially an adjustable one inside there, as there is room to access here if we drilled something through there. But I've got to get inside the blaster to really know how that's going to work ultimately. The ammo itself does have some concerns and those will remain to be you know, sorted out over time. One of them is that they are very small. They're going to be harder to find outside. However, the color is very good and does make it a little easier to see them and identify them when you're in greenery or grass. That said, when they do get dirty, I think it's going to be a little more difficult to find them overall. They are certainly a choking hazard for infants. I would never fire this in my house. I have a four month old, so there's just no way we would, five month old. Oh my gosh, time flies, you guys. <laughs> but uh, with my five month old, there's no way uh, I would fire these in the house and have these lying around. She's getting to that age where she just wants to stick things in the mouth. Um, and I think, you know, it could be a concern for animals as well, being left in public parks. However, indoors, this blaster is going to be very, very fun. Overall, I think this is a solid, solid start to this lineup. I am really excited to see Hasbro sort of return to form and return to innovating and making something interesting. This feels far less like a cash grab than Elite 2.0 and Ultra did. Both of those lineups really misrepresented what they were. They were hard to modify, hard to open, and I do believe in right to repair. So I think this is a much better offering. That said, I have not opened this up to try modify it yet because we just got these in our hands yesterday. But I do assume that with all the screws that are on here, this should be pretty easy to get apart. I like this blaster a lot. A little pricey at 30 bucks. I'm gonna give it four out of five stars. Let me know what you think of the new lineup. I'm gonna have videos on all of the rest of the blasters. Well, there's three to start. And we're gonna talk about the ammo in another video as well. So do hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video and you're watching this far, 
hit the like button. It does help us out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm out of darts.